everybody, it's me, Ghost Critic, and welcome to my Wednesday comic book pull list video. Every week I show you what I've just bought from the comic book shop. Today I'm coming out to you a little bit early because I've had the last few days off so I got to go to the comic book store just that little bit earlier. Um, things that are going on with me at the moment, um, it was... I've been thinking about this for a few weeks and given the amount of comics that I've been pulling of late, it's been kind of niggling at the back of my head. Um, and I was going to do a video on this, but given what I picked up today, I feel a little bit hypocritical talking about it. Um, I was kind of going to do a kind of more light-hearted look at kind of comic book addiction, which if you're following my channel and the people that I follow religiously um, know quite a bit about. Um, but like I said, after today's, and obviously if you saw my video yesterday, I had a comic book haul, um, it's difficult to warrant, validate, that's the word I'm looking for, validate my opinions on it, even though I was going to do very much a, a light-hearted look at it. Because even though my pull list this week was shorter than last week, there's I only had nine books to pick up this week, uh, well actually eight, and I picked up a new number one, um, my comic book store guy kind of lured me into some pound boxes, um, and I kind of went a bit silly um, and I ended up having thought I would only spend about maybe £30. I actually spent double that and paid £60. Um, <clears throat> fair enough, I kind of bought my kind of bags and the board so that was <clears throat> bumped up my price um, on the comics this week but still there I bought a lot of comics today. Before I go on to the new stuff, I'll show you some of the, the older stuff I bought. Um, I'll do the oldest ones first. Uh, he was doing a, a part of this box of, of kind of Bronze Agey stuff. Um, they're all pence variants, they're all British pence variants, but for a pound, I couldn't really pass them up. They are. <coughs> Two, uh, there are two titles here that I am collecting. I'm not particularly happy that they're Pence um, variants. I would prefer them to be the scent variety. That's just me being a little bit kind of elitist. I don't normally mind, but for the ones that I'm actually collecting and trying to get the full runs of, I prefer the scent copies. But I couldn't let these go at... Um, the prices they were. They're all pretty beat up, they're reader copies, but I don't have them in my collection so I had to buy them. Um, we kick off with Daredevil. This is issue number 126. Um, they're all quite worn and they're kind of all, all tattered at the sides, but these were all a pound so I really just couldn't say no. Um, <coughs> issue 132. Uh, which my uh, comic book guy jokingly went, this is the second appearance of Bullseye. And it actually was, I didn't believe him at first, um, but it actually is. 131, the one that precedes this, is the first appearance of Bullseye. Um, still going on with the Daredevil theme, it's 134. And then on to the other series I'm trying to complete, which is Fantastic Four, um, issue number 172. <clears throat> number 174, 177, 184, and finally for the Fantastic Fours, 185. So they certainly filled in some gaps for those two titles. There were a couple of other things. Um, <clears throat> I love these Marvel 2-in-1s and I always pick them up whenever I see them. So this is The Thing in Captain America. And uh, there's also the Super Villain team -ups. This is the first one I've actually got, but I want to collect these as well because they're just fun um, uh, 70s kind of Bronze Age books that are not particularly worth anything. Uh, but they're just fun reads for me. So this was um, Doctor Doom and the Savage Submariner. Um, so yeah, they were the oldest ones. 
Then he said he had a box of quite recent ones, and I must say these are recent, um, that he was selling all off for a pound. And they involve, uh, funnily enough, because it hasn't even finished yet, all the Battle World and Secret Wars tie-ins. Now, I did collect quite a few of them. Some of them I went, I can't really go on with this, but seeing these for a pound, I just thought, well, I might as well. So I managed to pick up the full run of Secret Wars Journal. Uh, so that's issue one. Issue two, I'll go through these quite quickly. Issue three, issue number four, and finally issue number five. Also one that I didn't pick up. Uh, I wanted to, but I just had too many on my pull list at the time. <coughs> Runaways, I think I've got the full series of this. Issue one, issue two. He said he was quite surprised as he thought this would be much more popular and sell out. Issue number three. Um, but he unfortunately had loads of these left. Issue four. Um, I hope there's only four in this run, otherwise I'm going to have to go back and try and find number five. Um, one of them that I did try, I just tried the first issue, didn't bother with the rest. Um, but again, when it's a pound, I'm not going to pass it up. It was Inferno. So I already have issue one, so that's issue two. Issue number three. Issue number four. And finally, issue number five. So <clears throat> they were all the cheap old comic book haul kind of deal that I got this week. Um, really wasn't expecting to go in there and spend all that on that. Although, you know, a pound an issue for those issues um, can't really, can't really let it go. But I should have. Um, so now on to the new stuff that came out this week that I picked up on my pull list, of which there is a new number one. There were a slew of um, issue number ones for Marvel, but I, let me just double check, yes, I left them all behind. Um, I think there was Hawkeye, there was all new Wolverine, um, there was a new Avengers title, um, Carnage. There was something else, but I just left them all behind. There are other issue number ones of this new Marvel Universe that I want to pick up that I had to go, no. But I did pick up num one number one from Image. It's the one that I'm sure everyone will be talking about, at least, if not picking up. And that is Jason Aaron's The Goddamned. Um, <clears throat> oh, Image is just so crafty with their kind of, the way they publish out their, their magazines, their comics, with um, these hiatuses they take, because there's always something new to put in its place. And you think, oh, I haven't got this many comics this week, so you buy a new number one, and you go, oh yes, I'll pick that up, that goes on the pull list, and then you find your pull list getting ever bigger and ever bigger. And I just, I'm coming to the point now, and this is what I was talking about at the beginning, when I just kind of feel a bit hypocritical about saying this, but, because it probably won't happen, but I have to stop buying all these new number ones, especially from Image, as great as they are, I'm just going to have to kind of bite the bullet and go, no, I'll wait for trade. Whether that will happen or not, because there have been some great number ones come out recently from Image that I have put on my pull list, who knows. But I had to try, at least try issue one out of The Goddamned. Um, <clears throat> issue five of Brandon Graham's kind of creative um, art house team. Um, this is uh, Yoris part two. I actually really enjoyed the first one of this. I think it was more the artwork on this that really appealed to me, but the story was quite interesting. Um, I know Sleepy Reader, Damien, is kind of picking this up. I don't know if he still is because I, I'm with him as well on this. Um, there are various different kind of stories within this eight house universe um, and they don't appear to be all connected but they all kind of, <clears throat> it, it's kind of been advertised I guess or maybe we've just misread it that they do kind of all house in the same universe but we're finding it very difficult to connect the dots if there are any at all which I'm beginning to think there actually isn't. This is just a great creative project Brandon Graham introducing um, lots of um, unknown artists, giving them their stab at 
I wouldn't say the big time, but Image certainly is a place to look now for brand new creators, up and coming new artists. And I think Brennan Graham is using Eight House as a tool to showcase their creative abilities. Whether you like it or not, well, that's your own opinion and your own prerogative. Great to see Kurt Busiak's The Autumn Lands back. It's finally just The Autumn Lands. Tooth and Claw No More. Uh, issue 7, the kind of commandy esque universe full of, of magic with a little bit of a sci-fi um, element to it. I loved this series when it first came out and I've loved every issue that's come out. Um, Busiak's had a little bit of a break on this, so it's it's going to be interesting to see where he takes the next step for this book and the characters that are in it. <clears throat> um, issue 11 of Birthright. I'm not sure. I thought I might have dropped this, but I know that because of the way my comic book guy orders his comics, I have to pick up the next couple because he's already pre-ordered them for me. So... I'm just not feeling birthright at the moment. The art and the colouring on it is fantastic. The storyline for me is just a bit meh. And I do have to start being a bit more ruthless with my books and just go, no, that's it, bye-bye. Um, another book is great to see back, Jeff Lemire and Dustin Nugent's Descender. This is issue number, is it seven? Yes, it's right in the corner, seven. Quite a cool um, cover going on there. Um, another sci-fi book from Image, but very much a different artistic flavour, um, which I personally enjoyed, and it's been a, kind of a refreshing change. Um, and I love this kind of story, this AI kind of robot boy story that we've got going on here. So, very much. That was all the Image books. On to Marvel. Uh, Secret Wars still going on, believe it or not. We're up to issue seven, which means we've got two more to go. Initially an eight issue mini series, but they plonked another one on the end. Um, but I've been enjoying Secret Wars. Um, it's just a shame it couldn't have kept to its um, to its solicitation, monthly solicitations, uh, because there are stuff that have gone on in the tie-ins that have kind of alluded and kind of spoil what is going to happen at the end here. Um, obviously we'll get the fully fledged story out of the main book but it's kind of spoilt it for um, <coughs> readers of this. <coughs> um, final issue of the Infinity Gauntlet um, using the Nova Core, um, Thanos in there, the um, Infinity Gauntlet obviously um, but we'll see how this ends. Um, if this precludes anything that um, happens at the end of Secret Wars. But I've really enjoyed this. The art by, um, oh, who was it? Um, Jerry Duggan has been fantastic. I love the art style on this very much. Surprise hit for me. Finally, two DC books. Well, one DC and one Vertigo. It was in my top five favourite comic books uh, last month. It is uh, The Twilight Children. This is um, Gilbert Hernandez, Darwin Cook and Dave Stewart. Uh, the artwork and the colouring of this is just gorgeous. The story is intriguing. We have, you know, the mis the mystery of these glowing spheres and this um, this beautiful, lonely, uh, naked lady that um, appeared at the start and end of the last issue. But great book, the four issue mini series. Um, so we know there's a start and there's an end to this, a definite end. Uh, so looking forward to that. And finally, <coughs> Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo continue their um, huge run on uh, the Batman title. Um, I think I've said this previously. I've certainly said it in other people's comments. Um, this character of Mr. Bloom, uh, this new villain, um, is very exciting. I, I like the character, but we've not yet seen enough of him. He keeps kind of being thrown in at the last moment. Um, and more focusing on, you know, Bruce not being Batman anymore and him making his new life, which we know eventually must come crumbling back down uh, as he comes back to being Batman proper. And obviously my reoccurring theme that I do not like James Gordon as Batman. It 
it just doesn't work for me. Um, I didn't talk about Detective Comics, the last issue of that, but that to me was terrible. Uh, I just found it very clunky, very awkward. Um, and as I said, I think, I can't remember if I said it in a video or in someone's comments, but I'm kind of waiting until issue 50, see what happens, if anything good comes out of Peter Tomasi's run. Um, but that's probably another title that's going to be dropped because I've just had my fill. This one... It's Scott Snyder's Batman. I can't... I say I can't not pick it up, but I could quite easily drop this and it wouldn't hurt me that much, but it, it's hanging in there. Wow, that was a lot of books. Sorry that took so long. I hope you've um, stayed till the very end here. Much appreciated if you have. Thank you for watching and uh, let me know in the comment section down below what number one books you picked up from Marvel because I bet some of you did. What other books did you pick up this week? Give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already. I do videos occasionally. I certainly do this video um, every Wednesday for you to let you know what I picked up. Until next time. Bye-bye.